Welcome back Vec Checkers. It has been a while. And I've got several projects to show you. I'm excited about them and also excited to see a lot of new subscribers. So thank you for joining the channel. I hope to have some new content coming shortly. Today we're going to talk about my upcoming 40th anniversary demo for the Vectrex. We're going to talk about how to draw on the Vectrex compared to drawing on other computers like the Color Computer TRS-80, which is also a 6809 processor. We'll talk about how I made this sweet 3D model of a Vectrex and how we're going to get it into the Vectrex displaying on the screen in 3D, glorious 3D, uh, with uh, back face culling, so it's going to cut out the back of lines, ideally. Um, so that's exciting stuff. I'm also going to talk about some side projects and uh, even a Christmas game jam that we had at my workplace. It's going to be great. Speaking of side projects, all of this is a side project to my Alpine Rescue development, which is still continuing. I just took a break after working on the snowmobile level in that last video. And then around August, Brandon Yates reached out to me. He's been using a combination of Pytrex and an LCD screen overlaying of Vectrex to get dynamic colors. Brandon had watched my video showing how we can blend colors on the Vectrex to get trillions of colors. And he realized that with the right timing, we could get his LCD screens to display colors dynamically. So different lines being able to change colors independently and at different times. So a very dynamic color overlay system with his LCD screen. So I worked with him a bit for about a month. We haven't got the timing quite right yet, but we will continue to work on it. And in the meantime, you can go to Brandon Yates' YouTube page. You should totally subscribe to his page. He's got 199 subscribers right now. You could be the lucky number 200. And he's got great stuff where he's doing tests with the Pytrex and a Vectrex. Things like the 3D teapot running on a Vectrex. He's got Vectrex flocking using his LCD color panel. So the flocking simulation is running different colors. He's got tons of objects in this flocking demo. He has a Death Star rotoscoped in Vectrex. Definitely check it out. So let's jump into the 3D first. How are we going to get this 3D model into the Vectrex? First, you need to understand how drawing lines on a vector display is different than drawing lines on a standard computer raster TV type display. To highlight that difference, let me bring up this emulator of the color computer that I had as a kid, the TRS-80 color computer. Now, drawing on the color computer is fairly straightforward. The only thing to keep in mind is the Y coordinate system is inverted or flipped. For example, here in line 25, you're drawing a dot at 0, 0. That's the top left corner of the screen and you're setting the color to zero. And then in line 30, you are moving forward on the x-axis, 20, and you're going down the TV screen, 20. That's your x, y, basically, 20, 20. And then you're drawing a line to another x, y coordinate of 140 and down to 140. So that draws a diagonal line down. And then we want to just draw straight up from that line, starting at coordinate system 140, 140. This is typical like algebra you've had. You're starting at 140, 140 on an XY graph, and then you're staying at the 140X, and you're going all the way back up to 20, which is near the top of the screen. Okay, and that looks like this. There it is. There's the dot in the top 00, zero position, and then we went down to 20, 20, and we draw a diagonal line down to 140, 140, and then we go back up to 140, 20. Easy peasy. Easy to understand, right? What did not change through this whole thing was the coordinate system. And that's where the Vectrex is going to mess you up. <laughs> because the Vectrex coordinate system is going to change every time you draw a line. It's going to reset it. Let me demonstrate that. The Vectrex follows the Cartesian coordinate system, where going down the y-axis, you're going negative. Going up, the numbers go positive. If you go left, the numbers are negative. If you go right, the numbers go positive. The other interesting thing about the Vectrex is you start at 0, 0, it's dead center of the screen, unlike on a raster game system where you start the top left corner. In the Vectrex, you're starting right dead center in the middle, and then you tell that electron beam where you want to go. You can go anywhere you want to with that electron beam. You don't have to go left or right scan lines like you do on a TV. But here's where it gets very interesting. Let's just go ahead and start by showing you how to draw, and then I'll show you what happens to the coordinate system as you begin drawing. So we're going to replicate the graphic that we did on the color computer. And the first thing we're going to do is set the uh, drawing speed. And so here I've got this variable called my draw speed. And it's basically telling it how quickly to draw the line. So how fast does it move that electron beam? And here we're setting it to 80. 
And then I'm calling this function called dot here. And uh, that's a little subroutine that you can get to. It's in the vectrex.i library. So I recommend using that. Most of um, the developers now are using this vectrex.i library. So instead of having to do it the hardcore, old school way of typing in a hexadecimal number, you can type in something that's human readable. We're using dot here. So we're going to zero, zero at the center of the screen. We're setting a dot. And then we go down 20, and then we uh, go forward 20. So on the Vectrex, you do your Y direction first, and then your X direction second. So it's a Y X coordinate instead of an X Y coordinate. We go down 20, we move forward 20, and that's the move to D. I'm not going to get into assembly coding right now too much, but then we want to draw our line. So what happened is when we move to negative 20, 20, that becomes the new zero on the coordinate system. Instead of zero, zero being the center of the screen, zero, zero is where we are at. And then we're going to tell the electron beam where to go from there. That's why I kind of enjoy programming for the Vectrex. It's like you're just kind of driving that little electron beam around. You're saying, go here. Okay, you're there. Now go here, this distance. Uh, go in this direction and go this fast. So it's really interesting. You have a lot of control over that electron beam. It's not a steady rate like on a raster screen. So in the color computer, we went to 140, 140, but we've already moved 20 on the Vectrex. So now we're drawing a line from negative 20, 20 to negative 120. 120. And now that we're there, we don't need to go right any further. So we can go zero on the X and we go 120 north. Basically, we're going 120 up and that's going to draw the same thing we had on the color computer. Let's see what it looks like. There's our dot at zero, zero. And then we go down 20 and draw our line to 120 negative. And we go up 120 in the positive direction. I remember I mentioned the scale. There's something interesting you can do with the speed. I want to demonstrate how people do scaling on the Vectrex. When you change the speed that it draws that line, in this case, we're going to reduce the amount of time it takes to get from point A to point B. And once it hits zero, it goes back to full 120. So you can see here's the center point, and you move 20 down and 20 over. But as the speed gets faster, it doesn't take as long to go 20 and 20. So it almost goes down to nothing. It looks like it touches the dot. And that 120 by 120 line gets reduced down because it's drawing it so fast that's almost pretty much instant. It becomes super, super short. So that's kind of how scaling can work on the Vectrex. There's a lot more complexity to drawing on the Vectrex. Um, you can have, you know, data lists of, uh, for your lines. You can have patterns. You can do a lot of different things. But we're not going to get into that today. What we want to see is how can we replicate a 3D model in the Vectrex? And that's what we're getting to right now. Here's how to not do it. Don't do what I tried to do at first. You see, I started by giving myself an impossibly short deadline to get a 3D rotating Vectrex into the Vectrex. Instead of carefully crafting an optimized low poly model made specifically for display on a Vectrex, I thought I'll just do the quick and dirty way of finding someone's video of a rotating wireframe Vectrex and rotoscoping, drawing over that with Vectrex lines, basically. It seemed like it would be the quickest, easiest way. The reality was the model was not accurate, the wireframe lines were too thick, the rotation wasn't smooth, there's just all sorts of things wrong with this. But I pushed forward, I, I decided to only put in vertices I would need, so I made little vertice dots in Photoshop that I could measure with, and then I made these rulers that I could measure and move around. But remember what we just saw, it's not a static coordinate system. So you have to measure from vertice zero saying I need to go up 35, I need to go left 20 to get back to point one, and then start drawing from point one to point two, and that looks like it's about 45 on the measurement here. And then to get from point two down to point three, I have to measure and say, okay, I need to go forward five and down five-ish. It became very rough because these lines were thick. So I'm just kind of guesstimating. I'm trying to get it accurate, but the video wasn't accurate. And then when I drew it in the Vectrex, I found out like all these things weren't connecting very well. I did my math wrong. The lines didn't, you know, it's like you're going through 50 different dots, 50 different points. And if any of those points gets off, well, now at the end, you're way off and you don't see it until you actually run it. Such a pain. In the next frame, it doesn't quite line up to the frame before because it's not exactly accurate. And so it was just a, it was a nightmare. This took me two months, folks, two months. My deadline was November of 2022 because I wanted to hit on the 40th anniversary of the Vectrex. It's January now. I blew through October and November trying to get that crazy model in doing the wrong way. That's when I made my second big mistake. 
of just thinking maybe if I rotoscoped it better. And so basically what I did is I drew lines over the lines. And I just wanted lines that are very clean, very just a single line, like a Vectrex line. And then I could run through the animation, at least see if it's doing about right. Problem is, I was still going off of a bad model and a bad video of a bad model. It doesn't match. It doesn't line up. And that, unfortunately, right now, is what is in my demo. So we're going to show that in a minute. But let me show you the correct way. And the correct way is for me just to make an optimized low poly model and then render it out in a way that it draws the lines and then actually make a 3D camera that rotates very smoothly around it. So I have exactly what I want. That's what I did. I got out my Vectrex. I started modeling it. I took measurements of the Vectrex so it's exactly right. However, the line thickness on the renders from 3ds Max were a little bit too thick to be accurate. So I needed to make them thinner. Fortunately, this was the exact same time when we were doing our holiday game jam at my workplace, where my coworkers and I individually try to learn new technologies in order to make a game during the workday. And then we play those games at the holiday party. So I challenged myself to make a Vectrex style shader for the Unity 3D engine. This is right up my alley because that's basically assembly code for Unity, which is great. And it would give me those thin lines that I need for tracing over and getting it accurately into the Vectrex. While several coworkers' games were funner than mine, I have to say, mine was the only one with a Vectrex in it, which makes it automatically cooler. And the awesome thing is, now I have this great Unity shader that I can use for prototyping future Vectrex games. So I have everything I need to redo this model, get it into my demo, and put it out to the Vectrex community as soon as possible. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and see what this belated 40th anniversary Vectrex demo looks like. In my mind, I was thinking of this laser etching into granite, similar to the Interplay logo back in the 90s for one of the first CD-ROM games that I ever played. The audio in this recording sounds rough, but after we watch this, I'm going to play it on the actual Vectrex, and you'll hear how the audio should sound. This is the old bad model of the Vectrex. I wanted to see how many lines I could do on the Vectrex, so I made a grid. And then I decided why not curve the grid and make a circular grid. And sooner or later, I need to make a share squid logo. So here's my little share squid guy. So I'm sort of tempted to make a share squid game where you're just floating around, swimming around. So that's what it looks like in the emulator. But my actual Vectrex has really bad calibration. It pushes things off the bottom of the screen. But let's see how it looks and sounds on my actual Vectrex. All right, let's see it on a real Vectrex. And one thing is my Vectrex isn't quite calibrated just right, but I did realize when I actually run this on a Vectrex, uh, things are pushed down a little bit too low. So um, I need to raise things up. You will see. The sound is much, much better on a real Vectrex. At least hopefully the recording comes through better. And um, some things are a lot smoother looking. I'll show you. So 
the Vectrex is too low and the timing was wrong when the lines are being drawn. They're supposed to make a pop sound at every angle, but they didn't do that. This part looks a lot smoother. I think the lines here at the corners are much better. Um, nothing much else to say about it. Go backwards to screw it all up. But um, it still has that flash when I'm like in this position, so I'm definitely doing something twice when I shouldn't be. It's interesting, it's not doing the thing where it... Okay, now it's working right. So, I can stop at least in the middle. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> A lot of work to go to get rid of some buggy stuff and make it look good on all Vectrex machines. I can't tell you how excited I am to see all these new subscribers. I just want to give you a heads up that my next video is going to be for the TRS-80 color computer. It's going to be a little update video on what I'm doing with that. It is a childhood favorite of mine. It is the cousin to the Vectrex. It uses the same processor. There's stuff in here that you might enjoy. So just stay tuned. There's going to be some interesting side videos that aren't Vectrex related. But rest assured, I am staying on my Vectrex development and Alpine Rescue continues to get updates as we go along. Have a wonderful 2023. See you next time.